everyone! It's been a while since I've made a video, but there's been some new stuff come out about a new version of Live 2D, so I wanted to talk about that a little bit. So, um, if you didn't watch it, it was a part of the Live 2D Alive conference, which they do every year, I believe, and so if you're interested in it, there's an archive on YouTube and you should probably join next year if you didn't this year, so yeah. So let's just have a look at some of the new features. So the first part about their presentation with the new features of Cubism 5 were specifically about UI and UX changes. This is the first one. I, I tried looking at this pretty hard. I couldn't notice any major differences. The only thing I would say is that the keys on the parameters look like a slightly different color but it's hard to say if that's an actual change or if i'm just seeing things <laughs> but overall i don't think this has changed too much now if we fast forward a little bit dun dun <laughs> you can see it has a dark mode yay so they didn't specify whether you can sort of change the light and dark modes like in Clip Studio Paint you there's a slider to change how dark or how light your program can go but having a dark theme is a big step up yeah <laughs> so the next UI change is to do with high GPI displays you can see in the older version of Cubism it's rather pixelated but in the newer version it's a lot cleaner and higher resolution this personally doesn't affect me but i'm sure the people who have high dpi displays are going to be pretty happy with that and the next part is you can separate the windows in live 2d so as of now you can like change the positions of where these separate tabs are within live 2d but you weren't able to separate them or pop them out so now you can put them on different displays for basically for an easier to use experience um for so for people who have several monitors i think you know this is a really nice change but once again i don't think i'll use it <laughs> now this is another ui change that I'm really excited for other than the dark theme and that's um, the groups that you have in your parameters and the regular modeling view will now show on the physics window which is so nice because when you work with a lot of parameters very much so like for physics like you can end up with hundreds of parameters it can be like so annoying to scroll through and try and find the specific one that you're changing so being able to not only use groups but have them color-coded is amazing and it another thing i notice is um you can already do this in the physics window but you can join the parameters like how they are in the modeling view which i hope means that they're more permanent because i noticed that with the er, physics window that currently exists you have to go back in and like join them every single time which can be a little bit annoying but this way like they'll be they'll reflect the modeling view of the parameters so it's that's really nice <laughs> the next change i can't speak about too much because i personally don't use mac or any sort of apple products really but um i believe basically that live 2d they're making it native for the mac operating system which is uh, Rosetta 2, I think. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry if I'm saying things wrong. I'm, um, I just don't know much about Macs in general. Like, cause you can already use Live 2D on Mac, but I don't think it's fully optimized. Is the problem. So, hopefully for Mac users, it becomes better in general. I'm, I'm sorry. I can't like help you too much about this, but I hope you understand better than I do about this sort of thing. <laughs> Now, another major change, this is outside of the UI changes now, we're going into more um, technical functions. I'm really excited for this as well, and it's um, improving blend shapes. So as of now, blend shapes only really, you can use it for art meshes and deformers in general, but now we can use it for 
rotation deformers, which you couldn't do beforehand. And you can also change things like opacity, draw order, and the multiply screen coloring. So you can kind of see up the top here that they've changed color from the black here. Um, and it says that the rotation deformance can be used to rotate, scale, and move in general. So it's just like making blend shapes way better than they already are. <laughs> so yeah, that's really nice. So the next part is about lip syncing, which isn't a function that I've used much myself so far, but people who are more into the animation part of Live 2D might be more interested in this. So as of now, there is already a lip sync generation feature in, an in the animation function of Live 2D, but it kind of works that it'll just sort of open the mouth and shut it when it hears the volume of a voice. Like, it'll just go open, shut, open, shut. But with the new lip sync technology that they're using, you can set up your parameters in these settings. Like, I'm pretty sure these IDs, it looks like phonics, like, so for ch or f. So you can set up the parameters so it looks like those specific phonemes um, for each ID here. I don't- I won't know exactly how it works until I get to use it. But, essentially that the mouths can dif differentiate between vowels and consonants. And so the lip sync will look a lot more natural than just the mouth opening and shutting. And it'll actually look like the model is talking properly. So, they've just improved that a lot. <laughs> the next technical part that they've changed a little bit is the auto mesh generation so you can see it before and after i think this is especially going to be helpful for layers such as eyebrows or parts of the eye which are kind of like a curved line or something like a thin line because you can see you if you've used live today you've probably seen a mesh like this when you've tried to auto generate it which is messy and it doesn't work very well for these thinner lines but for the new and improved version of the art mesh, it go the middle of the art mesh goes right along the line art, kind of almost perfectly. It looks too it looks too good to be true, right? Um, but this is this is very good for <laughs> if you want to quickly make models. Of course, it, it doesn't mean that you have to stop making art meshes by hand, but I think it's definitely going to sp speed up the process. And this one, the for the bow, like I can definitely see a difference, but I think the one for the thinner lines is a lot more impressive in my opinion, because th this just looks awful to me, this mesh here. Um, but you can definitely see that it sort of goes around the contours of the object a lot better than it did originally so they they're really focusing on the line work of the art meshes and yeah you can see also here the uh low mid and high amount of vertices when you do an auto mesh another technical improvement that they are adding so they speak a lot about ai but I wouldn't be too concerned when they talk about AI in particular in this uh, conference because it's not sort of the art AI which is currently sort of trending and controversial. It's nothing to do with that. I think it's when you have AI there, that's my, what you think of, but it's completely different. So what this AI that they are explaining does is they... so. On the video right here, it says deformers. So this one, like they're they're talking about the left and right eye deformers. So I'm guessing is how it works is that once you've made the deformers for each separate part, like the eyes and the mouth and the head, you can use this AI sort of automatic in, uh, technology to make the angle X Y movements. They won't be very, like, detailed. They're not gonna be, um, very... 
how should I say, like the angles won't go too far. It's it's minimal movement is what they are working for. But what they're kind of explaining here is once you have the minimal movement at, set up as a base that you can spend more time improving the quality of the animation yourself. So it's kind of setting up a base for you to work off of, like a, almost like a template. And the sliders here, if I press play, you can probably see him use it a bit. Um, it's kind of slight, but he when he changed the slider, it changed the eyes. And it was changing sort of the horizontal level of the angles. So you can use these sliders to do more detailed uh, changes to the deformers. It's, it's a little bit hard to explain. It's one of those things that you might have to try out yourself to get a better understanding, but um, they speak more later in the conference about how the AI that they are uh, that they are developing is more rather than seeking to replace live 2D modelers, it's to help speed up the workflow for live 2D modelers. So. Don't be too worried. That's not. It's not like a. It's. It's not a weird AI. <laughs> I, I, I'm not explaining it very well, but it's nothing to be worried about when you see the words AI. So this part is labeled under the AI research. So I'm not sure if this is going to be included in the next update of Cubism Five Alpha. Like. I, I mean, I watched through the video, but I didn't listen closely enough to hear them say that. So this might not come out in the next update, but it's the, something they're working on. And it's the automatic deformer creation tool, basically. <laughs> so it's sort of like a template in a way. So what they do is they use the names of the art meshes or the layers, whatever you want to call them and they create the hierarchy, the base hierarchy of the deformers based off like the names of the layers. So the head and then the eyes might be inside the head deformer or the arm deformers will be inside the body deformer. So it's building you a basic hierarchy so you can spend less time doing that in the first place and more time on actually doing the modeling. So. This is definitely going to be helpful and once again, like making a more efficient workflow. I'm guessing that they're going to release like some sort of chart that tells you how you should name your layers for the most optimal settings. So just name your layers. <laughs> if you, if you want to take something out of this, name your layers. <laughs> So the last technical thing that I want to talk about is sort of kind of another AI function. It's like an auto content aware fill for the art mesh. So like, for example, if you've ever been rigging a live 2D model and say like the head wasn't big enough. And so like there's a gap in between maybe the bangs of the hair and then the back of the hair and that you can't see like the face and you think to yourself oh i need to go back into my art software such as photoshop clip studio paint but instead of doing that it, using the auto content aware field i'll see if i can try and get show you exactly what it looks like So yeah, you can kind of see it filled it in automatically. So this will work well when you have sort of more cell shaded artwork that doesn't have a lot of details, such as like the, the base of the head, because it's kind of only these two colors here that gradiate. It doesn't have too much to worry about when it's creating new a new area for the art mesh. So it wouldn't work very well I'm guessing on stuff like hair that has detail but say arms or anything that you might there might be a gap in that you just need to extend it a little bit 
you can do this within Live 2D without having to go back into your painting software and then exporting it as a PSD again and re-importing it and then just uh, going through all that process. So you can do it in the program, which is very nice and it's just helpful. <laughs> So the alpha version of Cubism 5 will be released next year sometime in spring, so March, April, May, around then. And it also says that the Japanese and English version will release at the same time, so I can't wait. I want to use some of these features right now. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're looking forward to this stuff as much as I am. So, I'll see you next time. Bye!